said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Grace is sufficient
check one, two, three. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> it would help if I pulled the mic over. I'm so excited about my new equipment here. I forgot to pull my mic over. I'm excited about the program, too. My mic was over in the corner of my studio. But that's okay. That video was awesome, wasn't it? Come home to the father. Come home to the father. This is one of the most important programs I believe that I've ever done. Amen. Amen. Father loves you. And just like the story of the prodigal son, you know, I'm always preaching repent, turn or burn, you know, run to the altar, and we need to do that. But I, I, we also need to have a well-balanced gospel. God is also love. He loved us so much that he, God, gave his life. He came down to earth and was born upon a virgin. Mary, he, the creator of everything we see and we don't see. He, himself, the creator, left his throne. The heavens is his throne. The earth is his footstool. And he came down and dwelt with us. Knowing that he had to give his life. Israel's husband. That's physical Israel. He divorced in Jeremiah 3. And according to God, he had to die. The husband had to die so that he could marry Israel again. And now it's spiritual and physical Israel. What is spiritual Israel? Jew and Gentile. Messianic, Jew, Gentile, Christian, whatever you want to label yourself. If you've repented, if you've had a change of mind. See, repentance is more than mouth. It's more than being sorry with your mouth. It's a change of your heart. Teshuva, to repent, to turn around, not to do a 360 and go back to what you were doing, to do a 180 so that now instead of me facing this way, I'm facing the opposite way. I turned my back, the world behind me, the world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. Thank you, Brother Larry. Father, we come to you, B'Shem Yeshua, tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you would be in complete control of this program tonight. Father... I ask that your will would be done tonight. That lives would be touched tonight, Father. That those, as was myself, who are in sin, in bed with the devil, basically, would come out, would come out from among her would have a change of heart, would realize that we've sinned against you, against heaven and in your sight, Lord, and that we would desire to return to you, to get our lives in order with you, to stop sinning. And then you'll bring forgiveness when we've repented with all of our heart. Father, have control tonight completely. 
I thank you for what you're doing here at WOTW, Watchmen on the Wall, NCMV, NWTVO. The changes, the things that you're bringing to pass. This is all you're doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes, Lord. Now have your way, Lord. Have your way tonight. That souls may be added to your kingdom. Not to the radio station. To your kingdom. And we pray all these things. Beshem Yeshua. That's in the name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. Okay. I have a couple of songs I want to play tonight. And I just got to get them in the right perspective. I think I know what I'm going to be playing. The second one. I did not get this message, teaching, whatever you want to call it, till this morning. I mean, I was praying and seeking and asking the Lord what he wants his children to hear. You know, we're always here. We're always asking the Lord to have his way that his kingdom would come and that his will would be done. That's our heart's desire. I'm going to go to my notes. I want to welcome everybody that's listening. If you have an Android device now, a phone, a Kindle, you're now able to get on CMV TV programs with that too. Praise the Lord. God is doing marvelous things. But it's time to repent. And go home to Abba Father. I'm speaking to the prodigal son and daughter right now. He's waiting with open arms right now. And there's no sin too big not to forget. Excuse me for one moment. A little bit of asthma there. I get too excited. Thank you, Father. There's no sin too big. You know how Miss Patricia knows that? Those of you that know me as Patty Price back in Richmond Hill. Shalom. Same girl. Different heart. I'm going to go right there. I was born in 1953 on August the 1st. My father decided to walk out of the house when I was about six years old, seven years old. I used to go to Holy Child Jesus School. It was a Catholic school in Richmond Hill. I was born Jewish, raised Catholic. I remember being laughed at when I went to school because of the clothes that I had to wear. Hand-me-downs from my brother. My father nearly killed my mother on his way out of the house, tried to push her down a flight of stairs. I'm still talking about repentance. And I shouted, Mom, look out. And Dad went down the stairs and out the door, never to be seen again. At around 12 years old, I found out that my mother had leukemia. I was molested by my big brother. My mother was given six months to live, and she cried out to the Lord, and he heard her out of his holy hill and gave her 13 years to raise me, to raise my brother. Then in 
That's love. When I was around 18, I graduated from Richmond Hill High School. I remember going to a party that night with Terry. I wish I could find him, Terry Rand again. And there was a few other people at the party there. I dropped acid for the first time that night. Didn't go home. Well, I'm just going to keep it real tonight. This was not on the agenda. I mentioned to my sister Diane that I probably would share my testimony tonight. And the Lord is telling me to do it right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to obey him. <clears throat> I was there. He gave me this thing to smoke. I found out later it was pot. So I tripped on yellow sunshine. And then when that didn't work didn't kick in. He gave me another half. And then the first one kicked in. Man, I saw myself laying in a coffin that night. I saw many things that night. Didn't get home on time. My brother came and he got me. Brought me home. The only thing I can remember that Joey said was, nice eyes, sis. Nice eyes. He brought me home. Winded up in a drug center over at LaGuardia. It was a hospital over there. Used to pass by this guru shop on the way home from this drug center. And we used to stop there, do yoga, meditation, out of body, leaving your body. Not of God either. You want information on yoga? Let me know. Or do some Googling on your own. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. No man needs to teach you. I don't need to teach you. Let him teach you. I remember one night we were on our way back from the drug center. And we went to a cemetery. Me and my friend. Can't think of the girl's name right now. And we were huffing glue. Miss Patricia huffing glue? Yeah. I remember putting the plastic bag, not paper, plastic bag up to my face, breathing in and out. Wonder why I have asthma? That was a good point you made there, Lord. Wonder why I'm using this? Because of all the drugs. God didn't do nothing to me. I did it to myself. If you have some sickness and disease in your body, what have you been pumping it full of from a young age? We do reap what we sow. But he helps us walk through it. Hell, hello. This is somebody that had a stroke on April 24th. I can walk. I can talk. I can go shopping. I can do anything I want to do right now by his grace and glory. So here I am in St. John's Cemetery, where my mother is buried, all my relatives are buried. You know Diane, where is that, on Rockaway Boulevard, I think it is? And we're huffing on glue. Next thing I know, my friend is slapping me in the face. The only thing I remember from huffing and puffing on that plastic bag, it was in the fall, and I remember looking down at the ground and seeing these Autumn leaves turning into faces. Oh, she was hallucinating. Don Skippy, I was hallucinating. I didn't have no oxygen to my brain. How many puffs of air did I take of glue? And these, these leaves came to life. And the next thing I know, my girlfriend, my sister that was there with me that night, not a sister in the Lord, but, you know, back in the 60s, they were your sister. Hello. She turned into Satan. This wicked, evil, demonic looking thing came at me, bent down, picked up the bag of glue and handed it to me and said, now you can get high the rest of your life. You're with me. At that moment, she was slapping me in the face, this girl. I heard her say, wake up, wake up. 
you're not dead, are you? Wake up, wake up. The cops are coming. Hurry, hurry. And I opened my eyes. She said, you stop breathing. I thought you had died. I'm telling you, I did. I did. The Lord let me see what was in store for me. Didn't stop me much, though. I kept going on. Stubborn, ain't I? So we, we skipped out of there. Fast forward a little bit. I've done every drug you could possibly think of except heroin in the arm. Tiny over at the Escape Inn in Richmond Hill. She turned me on to Babanya, Coke and heroin. Up the nose. I got sick as a dog. And Tiny said, here, have some more. It'll make you not, you know, you'll feel better. And there's something in my mind just was like, no, I don't want no more of it. I don't want no more of it. I don't want no more of this. I'm looking over there because I have two computers going right now. I have my laptop over here. The chat room is on the laptop. So at that point in my life, I would wake up in the morning, roll over, and I had, if you ever seen the, the cough drop sucrets, that can can hold between 10 and 20 joints, marijuana cigarettes, depending on how thick you roll them. I would wake up in the morning, smoke, pour a couple of Stoli Schneier shots. By nighttime, I would chew down a couple of lewds, quaaludes. Make sure I have the beer, too, during the day. If I wanted acid, I knew where to get it. I've run into Satanists. I partied with them. I've seen their power. I know it's real. Not stronger than the Lord my God. But I know it's real. I used to hang out with my friend Debbie. She knew Colombians, I knew Rastafarians. Yeah, let me, let me go back a little bit. This one time I was on my way to Night Fever, a bar that was in Richmond Hill. I forget the street that it was on, 127th, something like that, Diane. If you know it, put it in the chat room. And I went there with my friend Chester, my husband's partner, in, in um, the t-shirt business he had, to get a pound of pot. We're walking up the stairs. We got the st we got our stuff. Walking back down the stairs, and all of a sudden, these four or five guys ran up the stairs, and I mean, I got smashed up against the wall. Me and Chester got thrown up against the wall because they ran right past us. And Chester looked at me and said, "Run, get out of here," and we ran out the door. We took our drugs, ran out the door, got in the car. The next day, we found out that they went upstairs. And they shot the owner, they cut his head off, and they shot all the girls and guys that were up there in the office with him. Three minutes sooner, me and Chester would have been in that office. Escaping? Yeah, in, it was in Jamaica. Night fever. It was called night fever. They found the people driving around with the guy's head on the front seat of their car the next day. Talk about the grace and the goodness of God. Talk about why I am so crazy for the Lord. Why I'll talk about him no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing. Yes, I do pray. Sometimes the Lord wants me to go in slow. Sometimes he just wants me to show the love of him and not say a word. And sometimes he'll drop a word specifically in my spirit, like when I was in Miami, and this homosexual walked up to me. You couldn't even tell he was a homosexual. He wasn't dressed like one, didn't look like one, didn't have, you know, all the, the looks, you know, so to speak, of a gay guy. The Lord dropped in my spirit his name when he turned to being gay. 
the circumstances. And I got in his face. I said, you over here. And he looked at me, and for some reason he listened. And he went up against the wall. Me and Michelle were there. And I got in his face, and I told him what the Lord said. The man broke down in tears. He dropped to his knees, and without me saying anything, he started crying out to God that he was sorry. When the Lord touches you, you'll know it. There's too many phony Jesus experiences going on in these churches. And I'm not putting them all down. Some of the churches are on fire for the Lord and love the Lord, and they're searching for the power of God. But there's some that are out for only money, signs and wonders, things that aren't necessary. If I never get anything, I don't need three cars and a mansion. And I'm happy. Whether a based or whether a bound, Paul said, I've learned to be satisfied. I remember getting cops pulling me over in front of Tesfas, 126, I think it was, Manana's and Jamaica Avenue. Happy Hours was across the street. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Diane. You were there with me for nearly all of it, and you even saw me after salvation. What a difference. Glory to God. When I remember pulling up there and the cops had busted into the place and I went to leave, I, you know, I, I had just gotten some pot. I had like three bags underneath my seat in the front seat of the car. And I'm talking to Debbie and all of a sudden Debbie's mouth is ha hanging out, pointing behind me. And I looked at the window. I, oh, hi, officer. He told me to dump what I had. I dumped one bag and he said, dump it high so that they could see me dump it. I dumped it out the window. And he said, do you have anything else in the car? Because I could tear it up, if you know. And you'll go right to jail. And I lied. I said, no, sir, I have nothing else. And he said, I don't want to see you back here again. I was back the next day. Me and Debbie would hang out with Colombians. Got some great coke. I'd go on and on with the stories, but let me get to the cusp of it. On July 27th, 1984, at 7.30 in the morning, a couple of hours previously, I was hanging out with Debbie. We didn't get no sleep. I had to open up for Dial America Marketing on Union Turnpike. I didn't feel like opening up that day. I decided to go home. I was too crashing. Didn't have nothing else to get high with. So got in my Pinto, my red Pinto. Got on the Northern State Parkway. I'm driving. All of a sudden, I fell asleep. Because I heard, Patty, wake up! And it startled me. And I was like, whoa! I was this this much from hitting the wall on the Northern State Parkway. The Lord woke me up. He woke me up. Steered back. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I could have died. And then I remembered the cemetery. The devil handed me that bag. Remember all the different things that were going on. I saw everything that he had allowed. Not putting it all together. The, the times I nearly died. The times I was nearly killed. I've had guns pulled on me. It's a miracle. I was such a whore. I'll say it just like that. I would get stoned and not care who I was with or where I was with. I would wake up and wonder 
How did I get here? Who are you? What did we do? That day, God woke me up. I made it back to my house. We were living in, um, what was that, Bayshore on St. Saint, Saint Johnlin Road? I can't remember the name of the, the city, but it was on St. Johnlin Road. Pulled up to my house. No, it was on Monroe. It was on Monroe. I didn't move to St. Johnlin yet. It was on Monroe Street. <laughs> I, I'll tell you why in a minute. I just remembered. And my husband's brother and his wife, Billy and Marie, were in my driveway. And they took the look at me. Thank you, dear Park. Thank you, Diane. Blouse down to here. Skirt up to where you could see the world. Mascara running all over the place. From crying all the way home. And they looked at me. I smelt like a booze hound. And they said, are you ready yet? I broke down in tears. Yeah, my boots. You know me with my boots. That's right. I broke down in tears, like I feel like I'm almost going to do right now. Who's forgiven of much is thankful for much, okay? And I hope this touches someone's heart tonight. And I went in the house, and I fell on my knees... They didn't say repeat after me. I cried out to God and repented. I realized in a flash that he gave me life and I've ruined that life he gave me through partying, through drugs, alcohol, sex with multiple people. We hugged. It was right there that my husband, he had repented on the spot too, and so did John and Bernadette. It was like a flash. Everything came to them. Give me one minute. I have to make sure that I'm not on here so yeah there we go I don't want to hear that beeping sound I lay down went to bed when I got up hours later I looked in the mirror I jumped in the shower Changed into jeans and a t-shirt. I still like my boots. But I was clothed. Instantly, I didn't want to get high anymore. I got rid of everything. Before I even read in the Book of Acts that they burnt everything, I got rid of my papers, my pipes, the bong. I just got rid of any, everything. I only had paraphernalia. I ran out of the drugs but I got rid of it all burnt it up and the next day I got in my car to go back to Queens to tell my friend Debbie what had happened she didn't receive the truth she never received the truth that's another story but I want you to know yeah, I can back up on that, Lord. Thank you. I have siphoned gas. I used to break into garden apartments in Long Island. I was with a gang. I was also with a, a biker gang also. I knew uh, Paul Rosario from the Pagans. 
Anybody know that gang? Bike gang? I used to break into cars, siphon gas, break into garden apartments. Um, I had a gigantic brown coat with pockets on the inside. I'd go into the stores and I'd fill the coat with booze while my husband was talking. Kevin was talking to the person at the front desk. Steal meat, steal whatever I had to steal. The Lord, if you repent... If you will allow him to change your heart, you won't be the same ever again. Let me go to my notes. Many understand the term repentance to mean turning from sin, but that's not biblical. Repentance in the Bible, it means to change one's mind. The Bible also tells us that true repentance will result in a change of actions. In Luke 3, let's pull up Luke 3. Luke chapter 3, I got my E sword out. Let's start at verse 8. Bring forth, therefore, fruit worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to turn these stones to raise up, able to, able to these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. He could turn rocks into the real children of God if he wants to. Don't boast in who you're from. Oh, I'm a Jew. I'm, you know, I'm special. I am, okay? I'm not mocking Jewish people. I was born Jewish. But I ain't no better than my Gentile friends, my Gentile husband. Ain't no better. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? And he answered and said unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. He that have meat, let him do likewise. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed to you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. The Lord started preaching. Fruit. You don't rob garden apartments anymore. You don't siphon gas anymore. You don't steal money out of registers anymore. I did that at the bowling alley. I went back at the was the Triangle Lanes, I think it was. I can't remember the name of the bowling alley on Queens Boulevard. But I went back and I talked to John a couple of years after salvation. And I repented to him. I confessed to him that I used to rob the register. And I asked him to forgive me. And you know what he told me? He said he knew. He knew I was doing it. But he was really surprised that I came to him and confessed it. Oh, yeah, Diane. And that did so much to that man that he gave his life to the Lord also. When we go back to those that are still in the land of the living... And apologize to them for what we have wronged them for. Hollywood Lanes. That's right. Hollywood Lanes. Diane's younger than me. She's got a better memory. <laughs> oh, I love it. Acts 26.20 declares, I preach that they should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. So the full biblical definition of repentance is a change of mind that results in a change of actions. So if you're going up to an altar on Sunday and you're repeating a prayer and then that night you're drawn to smoke another doobie, another joint, or get high, or get stoned, or get drunk. 
I'm telling you right now, you have not had a change of heart. You are not saved. When the real God, Yahweh, Creator, the God of the Bible, when He really comes into your heart, He doesn't dwell in a filthy spot. Where there is sin, He can't dwell where any sin is. So if we could still look at half-naked men or women, if we can still hear people using his name in vain and it doesn't get us upset, if we can still see someone we love on their way to hell and not be touched by the Lord's Spirit, to go to them in love and to tell them what the Lord did for us, Examine yourself, the Bible says, to see if you be in the faith. His things, his ways, his heart should be our heart when we have a change of heart. We no longer desire the things of this stinking flesh. You don't think your flesh stinks? Don't take a shower for about a week or two. Repentance and faith can be understood as two sides of the same coin. It's impossible to place your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior without first changing your mind about who he is and what he has done. Whether it is repentance from a willful rejection, knowing who he is, or repe rejection or repentance from ignorance, or just disinterest. I don't need that. That stuff ain't for me. I don't need that Miss Patricia stuff. You know, I, don't, I don't need any of that stuff. Why does she bother posting these things on Facebook? Yeah, ain't, it doesn't get, don't make me feel any different. You know, she's just a busybody. Thinks she's perfect. I've heard it all. I know I'm not perfect. But I have a heart after God. David. Okay, David in the Bible who wrote the book of Psalms. Who slew Goliath was the same David who slept with another man's wife, Bathsheba, and sent her husband off to be killed in the war when he found out the wife was pregnant with his child. Had a heart after God. Because when Nathan confronted him on what he had done, he said, that is me. I have sinned against heaven and in God's sight. Don't wait. Don't wait for me to finish tonight. If God is pulling on your heart right now, drop to your knees. Spend time with Him. Get it right. Get it right with the Lord. We don't earn our salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless he pulls that person to himself. John 6, 44. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of Yahweh drawing us. He opens our eyes. He changes our hearts. He takes that heart of stone out and replaces it with a heart of flesh. And he is so long-suffering to us. And his long-suffering leads us to repentance. The prodigal, the prodigal son, wanted God to give him, wanted his dad to give him, I mean, all that was his, quote-unquote, before he died. And the father went and gave him everything he had. He went and he spent it on wild women, prostitutes, getting drunk, hanging out. Then he came to himself in a pig pen. And decided he needed to go home. To his father.
Once a person hears the gospel and is convicted that his way of life is wrong, he must change his present behavior and bear fruits worthy of repentance. It's, repentance is not merely a feeling of sorrow or remorsefulness, but it's being so stricken in one's heart that one seeks the cleansing. They want, they, they just cry out in heartfelt repentance. They know that they're so sorry and their heart is melting inside of them knowing that they've broken God's law. Because sin is the breaking of God's law, the Bible says. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever lied? Have you ever looked at a man or a woman with lust in your heart? You've already committed adultery. Have you ever stolen anything? How, how many times does it take to make a person a thief? One time. Have you ever coveted something that was not yours? I, I'm not saying, oh, wow, look at that house. It's so gorgeous. Oh, I wish I had one like that. Or how dare they have that? They don't deserve to have that house. Oh, the car. She got a new computer. Who does she think she is spending money on a new computer for? You know, she ain't got no right to do that. That's coveting. That's sin. When we break God's commandments, the Bible says we're deserving of death, which is everlasting death in a lake of fire. The fruits of repentance, once again, are visible action, often called works. They show that a person is indeed changed. Jesus says, if you want to enter into eternal life, keep my commandments. And later when requested to name the greatest of commandments, he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And when we put all these things together, bearing fruits worthy of repentance, it's simply living as God does. Believing the gospel is closely related to having faith. When one believes something, he has faith or trust and confidence that it's true. Take a deep breath. Oxygen went in there. I can't see no oxygen, but I know it went in. God is real. All that you see did not just happen. And if you ask him to show you himself to you, he will. He'll reveal himself to you. God isn't a religion. I said before that I was born Jewish. I should really say Hebrew because I was never raised in Judaism. My mother was a Hebrew. Her mother was a Hebrew. Her mother's dad was a rabbi. I was raised Catholic. I became a Christian. We don't need to call ourselves all these things. I'd rather say I'm a believer, a follower of the Lord. Because no denomination can save you. Doesn't matter that my, what my mother was brought up in. It matters what the Lord wants for me. When we put all these things together, bearing fruits worthy of repentance is simply, as I said, living as God does. Believing the gospel is closely related to having faith. And when one believes something, he has faith, trust, and confidence that it's true. And this confidence leads him to begin to act in accordance with what he believes. And the result is obedience to it or following it. Notice how the Apostle Paul shows this in Romans. 10, 8 through 10. 
But what does scripture say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. See, people are saying, all I got to do is confess. Jesus, okay, I'm saved. No, look at the whole scripture. That's not what it's saying. He's near to your heart, okay? That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So verse 10 provides the balance to verse 9. It's not just enough to confess Jesus verbally and believe in the resurrection as an intellectual exercise Paul explains that heartfelt belief leads to righteousness, which is simply right doing or godly behavior. What happened with the prodigal? He sinned against God. The son took off, doing what he wanted to do. I'm going to Luke 15 right now. He wanted his stuff. Let's read this. And a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided them his living. And not many days after, the youngest son gathered all his together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Sounds sort of like what Miss Patricia did. And when, we had, when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that company, country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would feign, having filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So he ate out of the pig pen. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Listen, is this your heart tonight? Listen to these words. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him coming and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto the father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Father Yahweh, I did drugs. I was fooling around all over the place. I was... A, a slut. I was a drunk. I was a druggie. I was a drug dealer. I, I was a mess. But what did he do? He called me. He called me to himself. With open arms, he welcomed me. And he forgave me. And now, 30 plus years, he's using me to bring the truth to you wherever you're listening. God is running after you. Listen to this. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither a fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry, for this is my son or my daughter. This is my son who is dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to make merry. Is that you tonight? Have you sinned over and over and over? You so want, you so want to be forgiven, but you didn't even realize that it's by repentance, having a change of heart, and if you will allow Yahweh tonight, the God of heaven and earth, to change your heart, if you mean business, if you are tired of your riotous living, as Miss Patricia was back in Richmond Hill, 
in 1985, he will run to you too. He will forgive you. Be right back.
Is that you tonight? Are you running? Are you running away from God? I would ask you to do a U turn. Run to Him. Father Yahweh is standing there right now with His arms so open wide for you. And if you will make the first move, I mean, He's already made the first move. He was died. He died on that cross for you. And He rose from the grave. The curtain, the veil, was ripped in two. The separation between us and him was ripped in half. So that you could have access to him now. And he's been waiting for you. He's been waiting for you. To get to the end of yourself. He's been waiting for you to say, I can't do this anymore. I am sick of me. Because that was me. I was sick of myself. I couldn't stand myself. The real me wasn't the one that was stoned out of a keister. The real me is this. I pray... In the name of Jesus, in Yeshua's name, that you would take a step towards him tonight. That you would allow God access to that heart. That heart. Have you had an abortion? So did I. I would have a daughter right now, 35 years old. I don't know if it was a daughter or a son. I had a miscarriage too. That daughter would be, that was a daughter, that would have been 35, but the miscar the, that was a miscarriage. But the abortion I had would be 36 years old. That was a year before. I murdered a child. I could not even get pregnant. Me and Kevin had so many miscarriages after that. For what? Kevin is 23 now. We got married in 85. We had him in 92. I miscarried after miscarriage after miscarriage. And finally... Me and Kevin both repented to God that we killed that baby. And we, we asked the Lord, if you will give us a child, we will raise him to walk in you. Not only did he give me one, he gave me two sons, another one in 94. But do you feel so beside yourself because you know you've killed that child? He'll forgive you of that. He forgave me. I know now because I know him. Because I repented. I am obeying his commandments now. That one day I'll see that child that I aborted. I'll see the ones that I miscarried. I'll see my daughter Bernadette who was killed by a drunk driver. We have that promise. Are you into prostitution? I didn't charge. I gave it away. I did the same act you're doing. You forgave me. I never got caught dealing drugs. I would have been sent away a long time with the things we had in the house. Statue of Limitations is gone. I was telling about this the year after anyway. 
God will forgive you about that. I used to drive some big name people up into uh, the Rockaways. God will forgive you. Are you a thief? Have you murdered? There's someone in Richmond Hill who has killed a young girl, left her for dead. Why am I saying this? Maybe you're listening tonight. Maybe you'll listen in the archives. You wanted to confess it to me that time, and I never even realized until we put it all together not too long ago. It don't matter who we are. He can forgive you of that. And then you're going to go make it right. You're going to turn yourself in. Some things we do, we need to pay the circumstances for. But God will forgive us. Whatever you've done, there is no mountain too big. There is no river too wide. There is nothing that you can ever do that God won't forgive if you repent, if you allow him to change your heart. Father, are you done? Are you done tonight, Lord? Well, Father, I ask that you would be with whoever's been listening, Lord, either now or in the archives. If there's a Muslim listening right now who has killed many Christian believers but the Lord's been tugging at your heart the God of love the God that says love your neighbor not kill your neighbor if you're listening tonight he'll forgive you also cry out to him Cry out to him. Whatever you've done, cry out to the Lord. And he will forgive you. It's between you and him now. nothing more I can say except I love you enough to tell you the truth I'll see you back here Friday night I have no idea what me and brother Larry are going to bring you we have a new program coming up September 5th the first Saturday of the month called Fear Not Brother Nelson will be joining us with that program right from New York. Possibly Diane will be visiting with me that week. And maybe we'll throw her on the mic too. <laughs> we'll see you back on Friday. But tonight, spend some time with the Lord. Good night.